Hey, people. It's been a really long time since I did one of these. Um, I think on the current video channel thing, I'm still in the middle of recording one of Clouded's Turncasts, which I hope to finish one day, um, hopefully soon. But there's some interesting stuff that's happened recently uh, in terms of kind of metagame. Uh, there have been a lot of people on the forums asking, you know, how do I start a character that's going to survive? And I think in a previous series, I showed uh, the artistry start, but I showed it with a gimmick sort of stat allocation, which doesn't really help people that much. Um, and the artistry start's difficult because uh, it makes you really strong in the early game, but there is a certain transition point somewhere around the mid game where you put a bunch of experience into smithing and you're going to start swapping your equipment out for stuff you find, and it's, it's difficult to kind of to survive that. So I was hoping to find, show uh, a build that a lot of people are using um, that's sort of, it's, it's a general guideline of, of how to build a character, but it tends to have sort of uniform survivability throughout, uh, including the early game. So I've been mostly doing it with uh, Edain. So I've, I've never quite managed to get my first hat or win yet. But the Edain are really, you can see by their stats, they're just really weak. Um, I just finished a dwarf run the other day that was pretty fun. I hate the Sindar, sorry. Um, but we're going to go with, with the Noldor. It should be easy enough that I probably shouldn't die stupidly early. Um, although that can always happen. And this build does sort of favor... Um, just being kind of like a tough fighter, so I'm just going to go with the Fingolfin because they get this will bonus, which later helps us get Constitution. Uh, any of these three will work, sort of, for this build. You can kind of do whatever you want. With Fionor, you can go and make some early weapons that are really good for yourself for cheap because of the smithing affinity. Fenarfin, you can get Loremaster or uh, like a focus ability really early because uh, of the perception affinity. I'm going to go with Fingolfin. Um, Sort of a, like a canonical build is something like this. That's not it. Um, so Fingolfin's 2, 4, 4, 4, pretty common. Uh, this is probably one of the more survivable ones. 2, 3, 5, 4 is another one. Having high grace is helpful just in the early game because you won't hit as many traps and stuff. Uh, I don't really care about that so much anymore, but I really like hitting things hard. So this distribution works pretty well for me. Um, probably having more decks is helpful, but if you want that, the Fionor is, is the way to go. Uh, and then I'll allocate skills once we get started, because I always mess it up. Um, let's see where we can go with this. What do I call this guy? Uh, let's call him Noob. It's supposed to be a Noob build. Um, just before we get started, I don't know if I have a way of showing this here, but um, there's been a recent sort of fork. I shouldn't call it fork. There, there's a separate version of Sil that is just sort of floating around right now, made by some devs in the crawl community. A guy named Marvin P.A. went and took patches from a bunch of people. He contributed most of them himself. Um, just to fix some things that annoyed them about the game. Uh, so there's various little changes. I'm playing Marvin P.A. Sil and P.A. Sil. Uh, right now I'll put the link to the, the thing in the, um, the YouTube video uh, where you can go and build it yourself if you want. But this is really just a convenience. There's a few things that I've gotten used to um, that I just, you know, I kind of want to stick with. And to be honest, I just didn't want to build Vanilla Sail because I don't have it installed right now. Um, Sail is probably going to have a major point release soon. Um, January is usually a good time because it's Tolkien's birthday, but I'm hoping. Uh, but anyhow, until then, I'm going to continue playing this MPA Sail thing. This is still Sail 1.1.1, uh, just with some flavor changes. One of them is that all items now uh, land on a multiple of 0.5 in terms of weight. So this does make a couple of weird builds sort of unviable now, but um, for most of them it's just kind of an easy simplification. Um, you can also see weights now just by looking at the items before you can do that. Okay, so beginner stuff. Um, here's how I would allocate this build. Um, what you're really trying to do is get to dodging and flanking. Flanking lets you hit while you walk, basically. So if you walk next to a dude, um, you'll hit him instead of having to run into him. And you need dodging to get it, which gives you plus three to evasion if you moved on your last turn. So this actually, it sounds simple, and when I first started playing, I didn't really care about it that much. But when you combine these two, it means you're always hitting at plus three evasion. And that can help you a lot in the early game. Um, 
The other thing that I like to take early in the game is charge now, uh, because it sort of mixes well with flanking and, and dodging. You don't need to. It's not a requirement. You can kind of get through the early game without it. You might want to take finesse or power or something instead. But, um, I mean, one good way to do it is to take finesse first and then go for zone of control, which we're going to get anyways. But um, I'll, I'll do the charge thing just because it's, it's wicked. And if you find a big weapon in the early game, um, it's, it's pretty super fun. So stat allocation is pretty simple. You just want um, enough experience to get you close to dodging and flanking. If you can't quite get there, you, you're not going to be able to get dodging and flanking in the beginning unless you play like a really weird, like a B-or, House of B-or guy or something. Um, but you kind of just want to stack your stats. If you want charge, you need 500 experience kicking around. So I'll just start here, I guess. Uh, I used to try to make melee and evasion pretty even, but dudes at this level uh, aren't super hard to hit, so. And charge will give us plus three to hit anyways. So that's how you start, just to recap. Um, if this is our, our stat allocation, I put five into melee, seven into evasion, um, and then I bought charge. We'll start there. And now we just hope to God that we find stuff. Uh, Oh, the difference with Marvin KSL 2 is you start with a curve sword in your hand instead of having to pick it up off the ground, and it's always four pounds. Um, and you always start with the same number of torches, I think. It's just, it unifies some of the things in the early game and makes them more regular. Uh, so we want as much weight as possible. Half pound increments doesn't really help us right now, so we don't care about that. I'm just going to try and blow through these early levels. I still prefer to almost fully explore every level. This is probably a deficiency in my play, but... Um, I think for most beginners, this is probably the better way to do things. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking. So yeah, I think for most beginners, this is the better way to do things because it'll help you build up some experience and get some stuff. Um, once you get more comfortable with the game, you can dive. I just want to make uh, a really quick UI change because I forgot to do it before the video. Just want to make sure this menu doesn't... Where's the thing? Uh, there's just this menu that pops up right now when I hit escape and it's going to drive you guys crazy. Okay, let's roll. So this is just the boring necessary stuff you have to do at the beginning. Um, But, I mean, the thing with a big elf is that the most most of the stuff you'll encounter in the early game is not that hard, except for orc soldiers. So, we can still die here, um, as you can see. But, this is, charge helps a bit with this, because you can uh, get, like, an extra damage side out of the curved sword. Because we'll hit as if we have plus three strength. But more importantly, we'll hit more often, because uh, we get plus three decks. Sells a helm, and it is handy if you can kill orcs in the early game because uh, they usually drop stuff, and pretty much anything that you can get at the beginning is better than nothing. So, just want to kill the wolf because they're noisy. But so far, there's nothing crazy going on in this game. I'm trying to get to uh, my eighth point of evasion. And then uh, hopefully pick up dodging and flanking. I could go explore the rest of the level. But everything's sort of inconveniently far away. Let's see. Nothing in here. The next biggest room is in the middle. I just don't care that much. And good, we find armor right away. You really just you want some armor in the early game. If you can find that, great. Uh, sort of a, an ideal target is if you can get 4 to 10 protection, sort of, by the 150 foot mark. If you're inexperienced with archers, that can be really helpful because it sort of takes the bite out of their shots. Um, anything less than that, it really starts to kill you quick. Uh, sure, I'll try and kill this guy. The other, uh, Another interface improvement that MPSL has is when you hit a mold and... Um, you know it's there, it won't let you just like run into it, which is kind of annoying in this case where I'm trying to kill it with charge, but in general it's helpful. Uh, especially if you run into a violet mold which drains con. 
Um, one other thing that I like to do in the early game is uh, try to train myself not to rest every time I get hurt or something bad happens. Um, it's good if you can learn how to deal with situations if you're not at full health, because most of the time you're not. Uh, and if, if you get caught uh, resting when you're only at half health or something and, and bad stuff happens to you, you want to be used to playing that way. All right, I never... So that sword that made me think, um, that broken sword is a, a terrible weapon. Um, it doesn't matter what that special brand is. And I th think there are three weapon brands that can give you a sticky curse. One is Hador's House, one is Fury, and one is Vampiric, I think. And Hador's House and Fury will always, always, always be better than normal. So um, you'll never find a 1d5 Hador's House or Fury Broken Sword. They'll always be 1d6 or more because uh, they get an extra damage side. So I'm not worried about finding those, but if this is a vampiric weapon and I get stuck with it in my hand, um, that's really bad, because I won't be able to kill anything. So I'm going to wait to see if it glows or something the next time I see an orc, because then I'll know it's Gondolin. Uh, I'm going to inscribe these spears so I can throw them at stuff. Like bats. It's always kind of a funny mental picture to think about throwing a spear at a bat, but it does work. I guess that's it for this level. I haven't found the forge, not that I care. Um, but the thing is, the forge room is often special, and you can find possibly better equipment, or at least like more interesting monsters in it. Um, so if I can dig it up, I will. And you know what else I should do, actually, is... Uh, sorry, guys. I should set the always center. Um, just because I think it's probably easier for you to watch. Okay, so generally, I don't know why, before dreams are almost always dark. Um, so this is probably it. I think I've showed this before, but I like to kind of peek my head in before I commit. These are pretty terrible uh, at this stage in the game because you really don't want your equipment trashed. But if you're careful moving around them, you can usually kill them before they get out of hand. Um, but you don't have to kill them. So I'm gonna get, I got enough experience from that transaction that I'm happy and I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, another, yet another Merp and PA still thing is it auto-inscribes potions now with where you found them. Um, so you can guess sort of what they are. Uh, so this, I'm guessing, is something bad or slow poison. Um, so, uh, I'm going to try and do this throughout the game, just because I hope beginners will watch this. The first two floors, here are kind of the checkpoints you think of. At 50 feet, not much. There's not much that can kill you. There's wolves. You might get orc soldiers. 100 feet, orc soldiers are pretty much guaranteed, so you can pretty much kill those with any build, but you want to know that they're there. Um, worms are the only thing that can really get out of hand, but we can deal with those situationally. There's nothing you really need to pre-prep for. 150, though, is where archers start to show up. So our protection, 3 to 7, is pretty cred. Um, so it's kind of, at this stage, guaranteed that we're going to have to use some tricks to kill them or do something. So just be aware that there's going to be archers around here. There's nothing else really at 150 that I can think of that's particularly worrisome. Um, so in terms of prep, like I said, we can't really control the armor we find, but um, if you're sitting around 50 feet and you find like some good armor and a shield or whatever, you can dive to 150. Uh, but if you don't, you want to kind of play those levels all the way through, which is why I did. Torch. Catch up. Let's see if we can whack the centipede. Our armor's still pretty light, and I forgot that like elves have real dexterity. I've been playing a lot of uh, Edane lately, so I even get a little bit of stealth. You really mostly want to charge these things, um, unless you have a good weapon or something, because you've got some thick skin. 
Oh my god. Not worth it. Right, I forgot I'm playing the GCU port, so I need to actually drop the sword if I want to see if it's glowing. Which it's not, so it's not Doriath. Uh, white wolves, I guess, are another thing you can meet in the forge at 100 or natively on 150. Uh, definitely more dangerous than normal wolves, but not a super big deal. Hmm. Grab the division point, drop the sword. Okay, totally. So, yet another thing that MPHL does is if it glows on the floor when there's monsters around, um, it'll tell you, it, you just auto-ID the weapon. So this is actually going to be a situationally useful weapon to have. Um, right now, I'm just going to kill these things, I guess. Although I wasted my charge. Not quite sure. Oh, they're panicking because they think they can't um, move where they want to move. Man, I'm going to have to be careful. Being an elf is way better than being a human. Uh, that short sword, I picked it up because our main weapon, the curse sword, is minus one to attack. This thing is not really what I want to be using right now, but um, if there are like bats or like just things that are really hard to hit but don't do a lot of damage, they're just mega annoying, like these Corbane, um, switching to the short sword can be an option. Right now, I'm going to try and spear it. But it's just way easier to deal with when you can do that. So in the early game, try to think of you know creative uses for everything you find. Um, most of the stuff isn't anything you're going to want to keep long term. I'm going to box this worm in here. Oh, no. So when you see worms, if you get the chance, kill them. Like If there are one or two of them sitting around, just kill them as fast as you can. Because even if you leave them behind and lock them in a room like this, Odds are pretty good that at some point some orcs are going to walk through here and they'll escape. Um, oops. Well, I kind of want to go this way. There we go. Fingolfin has it a bit easier with those things than most because I get a will bonus. Um, but it's much easier to do that once you have a big weapon. some kind of special room, but I think this is one of those ones where I think there's a door here, or if I had a digger I could figure it out, but maybe not. Maybe it's just supposed to be a cute kind of thing. Mold guys. Um, if you're having a hard time killing those things with just your sword or whatever and you have charge, spears are actually a reasonable weapon against them, like wielding it, not just throwing it. Because if you get a single crit with a spear, it does a lot of damage. Um, so this thing just hit me to poison. I am pretty sure that these potions are slow poison. They could be something awful, but it's very unlikely at the stage that it's going to be something that like stat drains, so I'm just going to try it. And it was. Um, there's nothing crippling, I don't think, that potions can do. There's a herb of entrancement, which would have been bad around that orc. Um, but uh, nothing that would have really like killed me, I don't think. So this is getting bad. And this is where having a big weapon can really help because killing them in one term is a lot different than killing them in two turns. So I might just give up here after a couple seconds, but there we go. Infestation under control. So this is usually your first checkpoint, is this guy. Um, I'm sort of borderline where I want to be to fight him. This is about the earliest you find him, I think, because this is his native depth. Oh no, 250. Okay, so this is kind of early. I don't know, this is tricky. I've explored most of the floor, so I don't really care that much, but I also don't have a clear path, and I also don't know how big his pack is. 
He is just kind of hanging out there. I might try to sabotage him from the other direction. Let's try this. So here he comes. The ideal situation is that you get him at the head of his pack. But the, the thing that's really making me consider fight him right now is that um, I have that bastard with the broken sword of Gondolin, which, you know, not the greatest weapon to actually kill things with, but I can probably scare them off if I need to. Although I'm not sure why he's running. So, ideally, you get a good charge off. So, uh, the other thing that's happening here is that the structure of this dungeon is screwing with their pathing. So, when I go deeper into this cave, usually they would flank around their, um, the mouth. But right now, the reason why he's running away is because they've the AI has figured out that it's better for them to try and flank me, um, which I don't really want to let them do. So, just try to pay attention to where things are running. If You kind of get used to where dudes are going and stuff. Did he just say he's running? That is, he's not, right? Yeah, because that's incredibly annoying if he runs at this health. I'm not sure why he didn't, though. He only had 2 HP. Oh. Okay, he dropped crap. Uh, I'm guessing those are poison arrows, which, I mean, sort of useful. So this is the worst part of these guys with packs. Um, because the pack, you know, classic kind of thing. Each individual member of the pack is not that dangerous. So when they flee, you just are sort of tempted to leave them alone. But if you give them some time, they're not going to be scared anymore. And if they catch you somewhere else as a pack, it doesn't matter that their boss isn't there anymore. They'll still kill you. So uh, 200 feet, sort of the same threat levels. Um, orc archers are still by far the thing that you need to worry about the most. Uh, I think we start meeting orc warriors here, which hit hard. They're like mini trolls. Um, so you want to have one thing that's in your favor at this point. So like our evasion is pretty high. Or oh, anything over 10 at this level is, is reasonable. Um, so we have that going for us, and pretty soon we're going to have dodging and flanking. So that will help us kill the orc warriors. Uh, if you have no protection and no evasion at this stage, and your melee is bad, orc warriors are going to be awful for you. You want to run from them. Um, and which way does the dungeon go? Let's go this way. Yeah, I think everything else, you might get trolls too, but um, for this kind of build, trolls are sort of a giveaway because they can't hit you if you have any sort of evasion. These things are really... Uh, so I wanted to comment on this. Oops. You may have noticed that I'm keeping around this cloak. I haven't really found any other equipment, but I am keeping the cloak even though I have one. Um, if you find duplicates of stuff, it's good just to keep it on you because these acid worms can wreck your equipment. Uh, and if, if it obliterates or one of your cloaks that you're wearing, uh, it, it's better to, to be able to swap it out. Um, I'm on the fence about these kind of grieve things, these greaves when they're vanilla. Uh, the minus one, not loving it. I'd have one extra point of protection because I have boots. And once I get flanking, I'll, my evasion is probably going to be quite high when I'm moving around, but I just I don't like that trade-off. Uh, and at this stage in the game, if I can keep my stealth anything above zero by wearing light armor, uh, it, it's good because just the packs are awful. They're everywhere all the time, and they're not super perceptive. So even the difference between zero and one stealth is actually quite a lot, uh, I've found. So somewhere around here is a hidden door, and this is just one of those things where... I might end up resetting the level because I can't find it. Uh, I'm almost tempted to take like a couple points of perception, but... <sighs> All right. Not super happy about that, but... I don't really want to spend my whole life just waiting around. That's a better helmet than what I have. That would be a really good short sword for a certain build. See? So I just got hit with an acid trap. This is a case where if I'd found leather armor before, I would have carried it around just in case mine got damaged, and it did. 
But we're stuck with what we got now. Are these warriors or soldiers? Soldiers. So this quarter fighting, we're not going to be doing for much longer. It's just until we have flanking. Oops. Not sure why they're fleeing already. And like spears are legit good at this stage in the game. Um, orcs are terrible at everything, so. Oh, sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna take dodging, and I'll take flanking. Now we can work on melee a bit. Uh, let's go show you how this is supposed to look now. So, Corbain aren't really the first, the best first group of dudes to use this on, but let's give it a shot. So instead of hovering near the corridor, like you normally would, what you want to do is keep moving. Uh, and the reason why is every time we move, we get plus three to evasion. And when you move next to, like adjacent to a monster, you'll hit it. So I missed that time, but I actually took a swing. Um, and you might think to yourself at first, like, okay, being surrounded in Sill is the worst thing ever. Why would I ever step into a room of dudes like this? Um, the reason is that when you have nine degrees of freedom, it's much harder for enemies to surround us. Like, we literally cannot get surrounded right now if we stay away from the walls. Because uh, there's only six of them, and there are nine spots that they would have to cover. Or I guess eight, sorry. Um, so as long as we keep this up, we'll always have an escape, sort of. Whereas if you're stuck in a corridor, if you get monsters coming at you from both sides, you're dead in the water. Like, if they decide to charge you in the corridor, you, you can't escape, and you need to kill them. Or at least kill one of them or scare them or something. So this gives us a bit more uh, maneuvering room. It, this is going slowly because I sort of switched to the short sword. But um, right now, you, we effectively have plus 14 evasion as we move around. Oh my god. And that's how we do it. So I'll just I'll clean up this level, and then we'll stop for now. I just wanted to kind of give you a short intro video of how to get this far. And you can, you know, if you're a new player, uh, and you're curious about how this works, you can build your character to the stage, because you should be able to. I mean, we have not found any good stuff yet. This is something where MPA still should do. It should tell you when your torch is guttering. Um, so another thing as a newbie that you might want to try is, at this stage in the game, it's very, very possible that you'll meet uh, violet molds, which when you run into them, they drain your constitution. And I only have radius one light right now, so if by some chance there was a violet mold here, it would hit me, and I would have a chance to lose all my con uh, lose a point of con. <laughs> Again, with Fingolfin, I get a bit more will than normal. Still a pretty high chance that I'll get drained. If you want to avoid that, uh, you can build up a bit of perception. Keen sense is very cheap uh, to buy, and you're more or less going to guarantee, unless you move on diagonals or do something silly, that you'll see the mold, because it'll help you. It's basically like having plus one light radius without being able to light up the ground. Um, so you, if you're having trouble at this stage with running into violet molds and getting stat drained, and it's really driving you crazy, uh, keen senses is a really good investment. Um, it's also helpful later, if you don't manage to find a radius too light uh, and a couple other sources, um, by about... I don't know, like 450, 500, you really want light four or more somehow. Like uh, Probably 500 actually is closer because you start meeting shadow spiders um, and you can't see them unless you have, I think, four light. So I'm gonna try and... Uh, I was hoping I would survive the first move, but these hammer horns also confuse, so that's a bad combination. Put on that short sword. I'm just going to go around. Bugs can't open doors either, so you kind of... Oh, wow. Okay, this is a great early find. Um, usually gauntlets are minus one attack, which, you know, even if they're 1d2 protection, I really don't like that trade. But this is missing the 1d2. So, uh, sorry, the, the minus one attack, so I'm totally going to keep those. These gloves are... I was just wearing them for fun. See, there's a violet mold. Uh, let's see if we can hit these things from here. How do you hit a... Sp 
I don't know, I'm pretty sure if you hit a bird with a spear, it would do more than two damage. Um, great. Kinda wanna kill that hammerhorn though. These give good experience. And it would be great if we could find a weapon that wasn't terrible. That would be a really good find. Sometimes, I mean, if you're really anal about gaining experience and you have a bow and like 99 arrows, it can sort of almost be worth it to pump a violet mold full of arrows because uh, you'll get 50 experience for it. But, uh, oh, right. Okay, so this is a major checkpoint, actually. At 150 feet, you can start eating these things. Um, sword spiders. So... Protection helps a lot against them. High evasion, not so much, because they just have really high melee, um, and they hit really hard. So the thing to know is if you get out of their way, uh, you move out of their line of sight, they won't chase you. So that's really the biggest thing. Like You don't really need anything to deal with them, provided you understand that it's probably a bad idea to fight them if one of these numbers isn't really big. Um, and if you have a big weapon and charge, it's good to try to kill them in one hit. So. I might try to do this a traditional way and just charge into them, but it's not working. Oh, uh, and I hit the wrong key. So now I'm just going to try and keep flanking and hope that it doesn't get a good hit off. And this little wiggle thing looks ridiculous, but um, it helps you get the evasion bonus while, um, while fighting. That's it for the birds. Okay, that was a pretty teeny floor. I imagine there's probably more to this dungeon level. We just, um, there's a door we're not finding somewhere. But that's good for now. So I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, 250 feet. We're starting to run into, like, for sure orc warriors are going to show up soon. I'm really astonished we haven't met orc archers. Usually I've met, like, probably 40 of them at this point. Um, but we should suspect that we're going to see them soon. Our protection is still bad. Uh, I can bump melee now. But, uh, yeah, where we're kind of taking this character for now is... Uh, we're going to keep building melee and evasion to a certain point. Usually the next thing I like to get is zone of control. Um, and that's... The first erratic enemies that you meet that are really nasty are um, are wards, and they show up around 400, 350 or something. Uh, but we have sort of low melee right now, like our, our attack isn't that great. But you can compensate for that by hitting more often. And so the when you're moving around and flanking, like what we were showing uh, in the open room in the previous floor, monsters spend a lot more time moving and not just trying to hit you. And sometimes they move in really dumb ways, that uh, will trigger zone of control. So you're getting a lot of free hits all the time, and eventually you'll hit them. Uh, so that, that sort of compensates for the slow melee. And it lets us uh, kind of future-proof against those monsters that are fast and erratic, because every time they try to zip around you, you get like two hits off on them. It's really helpful. So that's where I'm going next. Uh, another goal is um, to pump perception. This version of Sill changes things a bit. So Lorekeeper lets you identify consumables now. You don't need to get Lore Master to do that, but it costs more, it's six points now. Um, so we'll probably go for that pretty soon. I don't know if I'll go for Zone of Control first or for Lore Keeper first. I might do Zoc first just because it's, it's awesome, uh, but it's gonna be expensive too, so I don't know. I'll go back and look at my old builds and see what I did, but uh, I think if I had to really worry about survivability, um, I would go for Zone of Control first because, I mean, we don't really have that many consumables that we need to ID yet. Uh, but I, I just really kind of want to avoid having to use ID consumables if you can. Uh, I used to do that a lot, and if you can get to Lore Keeper in this version, it's it's pretty helpful because you don't have to do that um, and risk all the stat drain and stuff like that. And plus it means you have more stuff left over for the, the mid game. That's enough babbling for now. Uh, just to kind of recap where we're at, um, right around this depth, I mean, again, we haven't found a lot of stuff that would give us a ton of experience. Artifacts give you a lot of experience. Uniques give you a lot of experience. We've had a pretty normal game, so if you get to 250, you should be somewhere around here. Um, AKXP, and we're sitting around 6 melee, 8 evasion, and I've taken charge, dodging, and flanking. Uh, if you want to just avoid the charge part, totally cool. 
Uh, something you can do is just always make sure you have 500 XP sitting around. And if you find like a battle axe or like a hammer or something that would work well with charge, then buy it. Because uh, right now we're not getting a ton of use out of it. Uh, although it did help us kill Gorg also. Kind of a mixed bag. Anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.